night two of the draft and I can officially say that Monday Night Rollins is back. It is such a great day, but we had a couple of NXT call-ups, some shocking draft predictions, and two time belt two belt Becky might be making a comeback. All that more as we discuss night two of the 2021 WWE draft. And of course, last night's episode of Monday Night Raw. Welcome to a brand new episode of Can We Talk Wrestling? And we are starting. working with about 60 wrestlers. We're here. So I couldn't watch the first night of the draft because I was working with Lana. So all those articles that you see about the virtual signing with Lana, I actually worked it. That was really cool. Anyway, so I'm going to talk about some of the really cool draft picks. Hit Row has been brought up to SmackDown. I think that's really interesting. I heard a lot of good things about BFAB from multiple other wrestlers, so that's a really exciting draw being called up. Don't know what they're doing about that North American title situation, but I'm assuming in the next couple weeks we'll find out what they're doing with that. Rich Holland's also an already that got brought up, which to me is kind of interesting just because of the fact that him and Dunn were kind of a tag team. So I don't necessarily know where you go from here. Because I would figure that the two of them would be brought up together. I know that they're really high on Rich Holland, and especially because he just came back from injury a couple months ago. That was really interesting. Um, Zia Lee also got called up, which is another huge one. But there are still, it is like 11 10, 11 15. Still names that haven't been drafted. Her business has yet to be drafted. Uh, Dirty Dogs, Dana Brooke. There's like a list. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. But to me, the most shocking thing, if you could see my shirt, um, I think it's quite fitting I wore this because I had no idea he was even eligible in the draft. Um, Gable Stevenson! If you can't see, I'm wearing the University of Minnesota Wrestling shirt when I went to Minnesota last month. Gable Stevens has been drafted to Raw. This is crazy. So, I know Gable has one more year left in college for wrestling and he has one more year of eligibility. Um, don't know if that means he's starting October 22nd, which is when, you know, all the dra everything in the draft happens October 22nd. They've said it 15 million times. So, I don't know if he starts then. I don't know if he's waiting till the end of his college career. But this is really interesting to me. I'm kind of... I'm kind of intrigued because I know his brother also signed with NXT, so I don't know if maybe... Well, I mean, the, the brother didn't get called up, so I guess they just have that much faith in Gable Stevenson that he can get called up to Raw without going to NXT. But I'm really excited for him. So, congratulations, Mr. Stevenson. Can't wait to see really cool things you. But, let's talk about big time Bex. Because Becky broke the news starting off Monday Night Raw that she was the number one draft pick for Night 2 for Monday Night Raw. Says that she's bringing the ratings back to Raw and is so excited to be back on the red band until she is interrupted by the Raw Women's Champion and SmackDown draft pick Charlotte Flair. You know, catching up on good times. We know Becky and Charlotte's little history. But Bianca interrupts and Bianca's mad at Becky because both of them interrupted her match last Friday on SmackDown. Adam Pearce and Sonya Deville had enough of this and deemed a match between Charlotte and Bianca for the main event of Raw. To which, oh, this never happened. Uh, do we remember when Charlotte first came back to NXT and like this was like the main event of that episode? Okay, no boy. So, this match was really good. I'm actually kind of upset it ended in DQ, but I mean, I guess that was just bound to happen. And I think the really cool thing is that Sasha came. <laughs> and Sasha's a... So, I guess it made sense that Sasha came because of the Crown Jewel match, which is Becky, Sasha, and Bianca. But, Sasha's now on the blue brand, so... Woo! But this was really good. It ended with Bianca just like, you know, laying out Becky, standing over her really tall. So I'm excited to see where this goes. The match of Crown Jewel should be really good. And this is this card of Crown Jewel I'm actually really excited for. And I'm really excited to just watch the pay-per-view in the middle of my college class. Like, that's what we're going to do. And I'm really excited to do that. But Rollins. Rollins got drafted to Raw. Monday Night Rollins is back. So I know he uh, kind of broke into Edge's house. That happened. But uh, the Drip God is ready to make an impact on Raw. I'm excited to see what he does. I'm really hoping he goes after the U.S. title with Damian Priest. Because that man needs something after this feud with Edge. Because he's been lost in the shuffle and I'm like dying. <laughs> er. 
Buddy, um, another interesting thing. It looks like Dewdrop. Oh, I don't think Dewdrop's been drafted either. I don't think Dewdrop, Dewdrop and even Marie been drafted. But Dewdrop stepped up to Shayna Baszler, so Shayna and Dana were wrestling, and you know Shayna won, and da like Shayna went to go attack Dana, and Dewdrop just kind of attacked Shayna like, you know, I'm ready. So that's interesting. Excited for that little feud that could be happening. I think Dewdrop's a good opponent for Shayna. And I'm excited Shayna got moved to SmackDown because th this is huge. This is great for that women's division. I think they are revamping both women's division on the Raw and SmackDown side, which is something I've been saying for months. So thank you for listening to me, Devin Pooley. I really appreciate it. Goldberg and Bobby have stared down um, talking about how why each of them are going to win their match at Crown Jewel. Uh, this should be interesting, meaning <laughs> Goldberg's track, I don't know what's going on there. Me and Goldberg's track record in Saudi. So that should be an interesting matchup. Um, and Biggie versus Drew actually got confirmed for Crown Jewels. So Biggie came out, and first of all, also, since when were Humberto Carrillo and Nicho Garza a tag team? When did this happen? Like, these two were feuding. Like, what? So, Biggie came out here talking about how he's so excited to open up his show on Monday Night Raw because he was the first official draft. No. He was a third draft pick or the second? I think it was the third. Roman was first. Um, so excited to be introducing, like, you know, opening up a show, and he's upset that the new day got split up again for no apparent reason. And, you know, he's excited because Drew confronted him. And Drew's been a long friend of his. And he's excited to see where this match can come to. Drew comes out, Drew and Biggie are like talking, and then they're interrupted by none other than the dirty dogs. And it's interesting because they each have a history with Dolph and Rude. I mean, Big E, like Dolph brought Big E in. Uh, Dolph also brought Drew in from NXT. So this was huge for, you know, that little thing. And there was a tag team match and Big E and Drew won. And they said at the end, see each other at So, and also Alexa got drafted. Alexa Bliss got drafted, even though she's going to be gone for a few months. Which was very interesting to me, meaning that people that appear every single week did not get drafted. <laughs> Um, but I know that there are draft picks going on right now, um, so I guess I gotta go see what the updated draft picks are, because I know they're happening on Raw Dog, but I want to film this first, and yeah. So, I'm excited to see how everything works out with the draft, but the one thing I will say that was kind of confusing is that they kept implementing that it was going to start October 22nd, and we already started seeing people that were on, like, people who got switched to Raw already, like, on Raw. Which was kind of confusing. Like, Kevin Owens, for example, like, got drafted to Raw, and he's like, oh, I'm here, and then, like, gets it dropped by Kira Tazawa. So, I think they have to stick with one initial thing. Like, I'm, like, they, it obviously makes sense that starting after Crown Jewel, but, like, keep everyone separate, because now, is Seth and Edge going to continue their program on SmackDown on Friday, or are they going to, like, do it on Raw? So that really confused me. So, and I think that confused a lot of people. And please, the love the God, Deborah Bui, please do not do this brand invitational. Do not do it. Please just stick to your gut and keep the brands separate. And with that, this has been another episode of King Talk Wrestling. I will see you all tomorrow for our NXT 2.0 review and me trying to figure out who all these people are on NXT 2.0 because I don't know any of them. But that's it for me. I'll see you all tomorrow.